Hello and welcome to worship for Sunday the 10th of December, the second Sunday in the season of Advent. I'm the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurik. Our student minister is Rob Thompson and our reader today is Elder John Boyle. It is a delight to worship with you together in this holy season. In the wilderness where it's hard to find our way, God is coming. On the mountaintop where we shout hope to be heard, God is coming. In the valley where shadows threaten to overtake us, God is coming. God's glory shall be revealed and all people will see it together.
Look at the world, but it feels like endless bad news. Hate, climate catastrophe, inequality, war, disease, hunger. Look at the world. The world is weary. Yeah, with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel's train, I've rolled two thousand years of wrong, and man at war with man, he is not. The love song which they bring Oh, hush the noisy men of strife And hear the angels sing Hush the noise, look closely You may have to squint You may have to peer into the shadows But when you do Compassion, reaching out, new life, prayer, reconciliation, helpers. Look at the world, the world God so loves. This is where the Messiah comes, not some faraway galaxy, not waiting for a perfect world, not a safe, sanitised, rose-tinted past, not where there's plenty of room and plenty of time, here. A thrill of hope, Emmanuel, God with us. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Gracious, merciful and loving God, we come before you today with humble hearts, with empty hands, in awe of the vastness of your love. In the stillness of this moment, we come to confess. We confess that hope itself sometimes seems like a fool's gambit. The world is so dark and so harsh, unfairness seems like the standard. Justice seems like a theory we rarely see in practice. Insanity seems to have taken over the hearts of people the world over. Men and women not so different from us think they can make themselves safe by killing each other. Time and time again, we try to do things our way. We look for comfort in the damp and mouldy blanket of our own strength. We allow bitterness to cloud our trust in your plan for justice and renewal and we seek vengeance or fall into resentment. We are so busy drowning, we lament the intrusion when you offer us the life jacket of your gospel. We lose sight of you in the storm of our own anxiety. And so we are thankful that you are the one, the one who keeps his promises the true and living God who demonstrates his trustworthiness through action, through mercy, who calms the storms and commands the waves. As we seek your truth in the words of your prophet today, help us to prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts to seek comfort 
not in our own works, but be glad in the knowledge that you will provide for our needs, even amid our distress. Prepare our hearts to be grateful in assurance of your salvation. Despite our flaws and shortcomings, sure in the knowledge that you have adopted us as your children and will not let us go. Prepare our hearts to be sure in the knowledge that those who have gone on ahead of us are safe in your company, dancing in the presence of the maker of all things. Prepare our hearts to worship the one who is Lord so that we don't have to be, to whom vengeance belongs, but to whom mercy is preferable, who can be trusted to be just. We ask this as always in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Reading today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. Isaiah is speaking to people who have been in exile for more than 50 years already, who have grieved the loss of their homeland, their temple, their way of life. They have raised families in a foreign land, all while trying to keep alive their connection to God, even though they could no longer worship according to their traditions it has been a difficult few generations in which they have lived through war, displacement, learning a new nation and language, a new political and economic system. For decades they have been going back and forth between wondering if they could ever go home or if they should just fully integrate into society where they have been sent to live. After all this time, the word of God came through the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God, Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven, uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I say, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, the earth. Constancy is like the flower of the field, the grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion. Herald all good news. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather his lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. This is a passage that always brings up such good feelings. I think because it starts with the word comfort and ends with God carrying the lambs in his arms. And because, of course, it brings to mind Handel's Messiah. How could we not feel good when we're humming every valley shall be exalted? It just sort of sets a mood, don't you think? Now, I don't want to ruin that mood exactly, but I do want to notice some things that I had not always paid that much attention to before, which I must warn you might affect that warm, fuzzy, easy peace feeling. Every valley shall be lifted up 
and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground will be made level and the rough places plain. Now, some days walking up from the train station, I might wish for the mountains and hills to be made low. But if we take these words seriously, this is not just a giant construction project. It's a remaking of creation. This is like earthquakes and volcanoes and landslips. The entire landscape is being reformed. Every single thing is shifting. Not one landmark will remain in place. We would look around and not recognize anything as if we've never even been here before. And the prophet says, then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Then, as in after this remaking of creation is accomplished. After we get to the stage where we can't find our own way because we don't see anything familiar, then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. Not some of us who know where to look. Not some of us who have gone to the same places over and over again, looking for God in the same ways. Not some of us who have given poor directions to those who've been seeking. Not some of us who have made it as hard as possible to find the way in through a maze of requirements, rules, traditions, and obscure language that's harder than a password. All people, all people shall see it together once everything has shifted to make a way for God to come. The prophet complains about having to give this message because people are prone to fading away at the slightest hint of change. Notice he says, people are like grass. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Now, I don't know about you, but I also hear a recreation in that. With all the land changing shape so that God can come to us, we are primed to hear echoes of God breathing life into creation. Except this time, it's that God's breath of life actually withers those who thought their way was forever. That sense that when we are flourishing, when everything is going great, we have built something that will last. To discover that, in fact, all of it is fragile is disorienting, perhaps as disorienting as looking up to discover the entire landscape around has changed and nothing looks the way we remember. When we can't find our way, the breath of life can feel more like a sigh of despair, the end of an era, or maybe like a last gasp trying to remake the way it was before, only to find we've exhausted ourselves and there's nothing for it but to lie down and fade away. But, says the prophet, but the word of our God will stand forever. No matter how faint we feel, no matter how disoriented we may be looking around at a world where everything is changed, the word of our God will stand forever. And that word includes the promise that when the whole landscape has shifted beyond recognition, that is when God is coming to us so that all people, not just some, may see God's glory together. So we come back around to that comforting, peaceful vision, but by way of a complicated and perhaps even terrifying journey into the wilderness of the unknown. And isn't that kind of how the world feels today? We look around and everything feels different. We can't use any of the old familiar landmarks to find our way. And it's so exhausting trying to figure out what on earth is going on that even the breath of life feels like too much. The world is being remade in a new form and we don't know if we're going to like it or not. 
But even when all our old comfortable ways disappear, even when the road we had so reliably traveled is no more, whether or not it took us where we wanted to go, at least we knew where it went, even when the institutions and buildings we thought were so stable, despite the ways they perpetuated injustice and inequality and ineffectiveness, when they begin to fall, there is this truth. The word of our God stands forever. It is the only thing, in fact, that stands forever. And in the recreated world, where everything else feels strange, that truth will be more visible than ever. There's something else in Isaiah's call and promise here that I think is really important, and that is instructions. Comfort, comfort my people. Speak tenderly to them. Call out the good news. Point to the vision of God coming across this remade earth to come to us. These are instructions to the community. Comfort each other. Speak tenderly to each other. Give good news to each other. Point out where we see God to each other. These are instructions to God's people, commanding us to be witnesses of the truth that God's word stands forever, even when the evidence in the world is shaky at best. And that made me think of how last week we talked about hope as a discipline, something we have to practice over and over again. I think Isaiah is also pointing us to the fact that peace is a discipline. We have to practice speaking tenderly to each other when we'd rather lash out about the constant shifting of the ground under our feet, when we'd rather get revenge. We have to practice offering comfort for others when what we really want is just to have our own comforts catered for while ignoring sometimes the basic needs and humanity of others. We have to practice looking for God and sharing that vision with others when the headlines are mostly bad. When we practice these things, when we practice peace, that actually hastens the recreating, the reshaping of the landscape that allows God to come to us. So paradoxically, practicing the discipline of peace may actually lead to more upheaval at first, which makes it difficult to practice. But peace is not about calm. It's about a reshaped world where God's wholeness is the norm. So practicing peace also means practicing justice, the kind where those who don't seem to deserve tenderness or comfort get it anyway, where those who promulgate division as a strategy for calm or inequality as some kind of virtue get sent away to learn God's more excellent way. Practicing peace moves the goalposts from the ways of this world to the ways of the kingdom, and that can make everything feel unfamiliar and scary when we have relied on those worldly systems. Practicing peace requires speaking up. Even when we think there is no point shouting into the chaos, because God calls for the message to be proclaimed even if we don't think anyone is listening. Peace is a discipline we have to practice every day with compassion and hope and trust that transcends the evidence of our eyes. So yes, the landscape is shifting. Yes, everything feels unfamiliar and scary. And yes, the more we practice peace, the more the earth will move and the more things will change. But that reshaping is required if we truly long for the day when all peoples will see God's glory together, together in peace. May it be so. Amen.
friends, part of the discipline of hope and the discipline of peace is to focus ourselves on the presence and character of God, seeking alignment with God's desire for the world. In this world where so often the light of peace feels fragile or even extinguished, this is even more important as a practice. So let us pray together. God of all comfort, we thank you that all things are held in your hand and your word stands forever. We come before you with gratitude for the ways you have fed and carried us and placed us in community together that we might nurture, comfort, and encourage each other. In times of trouble, we have looked for comfort in so many places. While you have been reaching out to us through the hands of our neighbors, and longing to reach out to our neighbors through our hands. We pray this day that all people would see your goodness and learn to extend a hand of comfort and peace to one another, that together we might experience the liberation of your kingdom come on earth. We pray this day for those who see no reason for hope, whose day-to-day -day life has no evidence of good news, whose longings for justice, for companionship, for grace go unanswered. May they hear and believe the truth that you are indeed present with power to change things, that this present situation is not forever, that your breath will always have the last word. We pray this day for the world that needs reshaping, for all the places where obstacles stand between your people and abundant life, for people who will suffer in the disruption of the recreating, and those who cannot wait any longer for it to begin. Especially we remember today the people of Palestine and Israel, Ukraine, Yemen, Venezuela, the Congo, and people closer to home, those sleeping rough in these cold, wet days, those who aren't safe in their homes, those who have to rely on food banks and donations, those who struggle with addiction and isolation. May your creation's healing begin May the systems that need to turn upside down start to shift. And may all people have enough to flourish for their time and to bear witness to the power of your breath of life. However disorienting your work in the world may prove, ground us, O oh God, in the truth that your word stands forever. And draw us along your way into the peace of your kingdom. We ask in the name of the one who embodies your will for the world, Jesus the Christ, coming among us to reconcile us to you forever, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us the wrong we have done as we forgive those who have wronged us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, go forth from this time of worship to hold hope for one another, to make peace together, to speak up with good news that reveals the presence of our God who is even now making a way in the wilderness. And as you go, may the Spirit of God go above you to watch over you. May the Spirit of God go beside you to be your companion. 
May the Spirit of God go before you to show you the way and behind you to push you into places you might not go alone. And may the Spirit of God go within you to remind you that you are loved more deeply than you can possibly imagine. May the fire of God's love burn brightly in you and through you into the world. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.